This weekend at UFC 295, on stake you can get double winnings on Pavlovich versus Aspinall and Pohaska versus Pereira if either one finishes in the fourth or the fifth round. Plus, when you sign up on stake using ambassador code STARBENDER295, you get a 200% bonus on your first deposit. Stake, the best place to bet. Yup, yup, we're here, we're live. Back again, but um, yeah, we're in the fade, the parents' fade, just chilling. I love coming here, man. We don't have to do chores, which is good, because but we make up in other ways. That's <laughs> transfer money. Hey, <laughs> Gunje. <laughs> we don't have to do chores, but like, I can just relax and just chill. <laughs> you know the vibes. Relax, man. It's a soft life. Just enjoy myself, man. Fucking crazy, isn't it? Like, so it was meant to be Jones versus Stipe, and then uh, Jones hurts his shoulder or peck on two weeks notice or 17 days notice they bring tom aspinall versus sergey pavlovich so yeah them taking it on short notice both of them crazy risky fight both at the top of the heavyweight division right now i'm excited for that i'm glad jiri why doesn't jiri have a fucking avatar there wasn't enough in the budget <laughs> <laughs> oh oops <laughs> stack mirror let's see let's see all right Ooh, diego lopez that's my guy already sleeper fight that's my one sleeper fight Ooh. Actually, that or the Sergey fight with um, Tom Aspen, I don't know. Who's he fighting? Pat Sabatini? I don't know who that is, That's but Diego Lopez, he took um, his first UFC fight on short notice. I can't remember against who, but got really close. Like, almost won the fight. Fucking got, got the guy in, like, submissions. But then the second fight just showed, full camp just showed who he is. He's the guy to watch on this card. Um, sleeper fight. Sleeper fighter or sleeper fight? Him. Yeah, the other sleeper Lopez. fight I would say will be Matt Frivola versus Benoit St. Dennis. Ooh. Stack meter. Okay, stack meter out of 10. Uh, it's top heavy. Top main card heavy. is good though, but. Yeah, main card is good. Top heavy. I'll give it a. Uh, give it a. Uh, but it's going to be crazy. The fights are going to be crazy. Especially even like Tom versus Sergi. I'm really excited for that. Gide versus Pereira. Mmm. I'll give it an 8.5. I'll give it an 8.5 out of 10. Yeah, the prelim could be better. Yeah, prelim, just name-wise, but you never know. Yeah. And the sleeper fight. fight get crazy. Sleeper fight, Diego Lopez Diego. versus Pat Sabatini. Because we were so impressed with um, Diego Lopez um, when he got into the UFC, yeah. let's just take a look of where he came from. His old fights. Yeah. I actually haven't watched them yet. I this is like a two-minute two minute video. I bet he smokes people. Craig Jones told me his, um, his jiu-jitsu is insane. Tell me what you think of the striking that you see in this video. So far, so it. good. Because I've uh, I've seen him strike a bit, but the first fight I remember, the, the last fight he finished the guy quick. But um, first fight, you just you know you can tell he took the fight on short notice a little bit, but still looked like a weapon. Sabatini has six UFC fights under his belt. Sabatini also has eleven submissions on his record. They seem to be both high level grapplers. How do you expect the fight to go? Uh, um, what's his record, Sabatini? Eighteen to four. Like 18. not a bad record. It's a good yeah, record. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, hmm. 11 I'm submissions. Oh, okay. High level black belt. You know, standard, it might get canceled out and they strike, but I don't know what their striking is like individually, but what I like to see is just crazy demonstration of grappling, scrambles, position changes, even basics like pressure passing and stuff like that, counters. I'd love to see that in this fight. I'd love to see them go for things, you know, especially I like when grapplers just start going for shit. That's, it's exciting. But, you know, you got to play it safe sometimes, especially when you're trying to climb the ranks. Some guys like to play it safe. But I think it's exciting, especially for the fans. Not fuck the fans, respectfully. But it's exciting when guys go for stuff and not worry about trying to... I hate not protecting their record. I guess so, yeah, because some guys do. They protect their record. But I don't think these guys care. They don't care about their record. So I, maybe we might see some craziness. Some crazy striking exchanges song gets dropped. Some guy jumps on another guy. They start, like fucking like lizards scrambling crazy yeah i'm excited but regardless i'm going my guy diego lopez does the fight go, go the distance nah i don't think so not this one i don't think it goes the distance but i'm gonna go diego lopez all right so next fight matt frivola versus benoit saint dennis this is the other sleeper fight frivola has been on a tear since he got knocked out in seven seconds by terence mckinney but he's coming off three ko's I'm really play some of those ko's oh shit nasty. okay nah, 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 i've probably nah. seen them as well the nasty KOs. Oh, yep, I saw this. Oh shit. That was him too. And Drew's no fucking joke. Drew is no joke. No fucking way. Drew was coming off another 3K. Yeah, 3K. He, he, he even knocked well. out um, Terrence as well. Drew yeah. knocked out Terrence. Oh, okay. This just got interesting. Boom. Ooh. That was a right. Yeah. 
Oh, he likes that left check hook. Look at the like the left. He walks him into it. Ooh. Boom. And then got him with the left. Boy walked him into it, then boom. Pushed him again. Boom. Matt Favola is on a tear right now. But also Benoit St. Dennis is another exciting fighter. With only one loss on his record, which was in his UFC debut, that was by decision. He followed it up with sub KO, sub KO in his next four fights. All of his victories on his MMA record have come by finish. Striking's nice. Look at that squeeze on the chin too. Nice. Good pressure, good level change on him. Oh, boom. We, uh, oh, buddy. Nice. Took his time. There we go. Good distance control. Yeah, this is a real sleeper fight. It's going to be crazy. Man, I, you know what? You might be right. How do you think this fight plays out? Who knows? Might be a stand-up war. But he mixes it up well with Benoit. He likes to drop the levels and stuff. But again, my, for Roland, might catch him. Against the fence. Oh, not against the fence. While his back's on the fence. And then, because he seems like, Benoit seems like, from what I've seen, briefly, when he gets you to the fence and he starts to like pick at you, at one point when he gets you to fire back, whoop, shoots. You know what? Fucking roll the dice on this one. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm gonna go Matt. I'm gonna go for Vola. I feel like certain people, when they come back from certain things, like you said, after the, the knockout with Terrence, he's been on a, on a tear, on a streak, knockout streak. So momentum, I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with Matt. And yeah, just my gut feeling. But again, if you roll the dice, I don't blame you. Next fight. Okay, Jessica Andrade versus Mackenzie Dern. Jessica has been very busy this year. This will be her fifth fight. This in year? 2023, yeah. Fuck off. Yeah, uh, January 22nd, Laura Murphy. February 19th, Blanchfield. May 7th, Jan Zhuanan. August 6th, Tatiana Suarez. And then this weekend against Mackenzie Dern. Dern has struggled to be consistent since her win against Nina Nunes. It's been one win, one loss, one win, one loss. But she's also been having some personal problems. She's changed management. She went through a nasty divorce. And Was it really she, nasty? She announced today that the money she's making from this fight is going to her ex. Damn. City boys up, man. <laughs> <laughs> I do not condone that. It's just sad. It's a sad situation. You know about both of them. Yeah. So tell me how this fight plays out. Mackenzie had a lot of promise when she came into the UFC and she showcased, she showcased that. She showcased her skills, improved the striking very well under the tutelage of uh, Perillo. Um, but then she's facing Jessica Andrade, heavy hands. I mean, you've seen her slams, you've seen her knock people out, good submissions as well. Because Andrade is going to start strong and Mackenzie's going to make sure she takes her to the ground in the first round. If I was Mackenzie, I'd try and grapple her in the first round. If I was Andrade, pressure. Put the pressure, stay right in the pocket. But at the same time, even show the knees, throw some front kicks, stop her from trying to like get close, keep her in the stomach. Mackenzie, yeah, stick to her in the first round, wear her down, and she could probably even submit her in the first round, if I'm being honest, because Mackenzie's that good. I want to go Mackenzie, but I just don't want to count out Andrade because I, I just know she's really good. Does the fight go the distance? Yes. <laughs> okay, before we get into this, we'll talk about your buddy John Jones's unfortunate injury. Weeks out from this fight, mm -hmm. and it looks like he's gonna be out a year. He said eight months. He said eight months. He hadn't even had surgery yet. Oh, really? Yeah. Damn. He eight had months, surgery yeah. now. Yeah. Had surgery yet? It sucks. I hate. I hate when. The closest I've seen was Tyson Pedro. Our ACL. He had ACL done. Boom. And then it was healing. And then boom. I think same knee maybe or second knee. I can't remember, but another one back to back. And the mental fortitude you have to have when you see your friends fighting, see them getting ready for camps, you want to join in and you can't, and then you have to just watch them. And you have to keep your hopes up, keep your, keep your fire burning. I know how hard that is. Even me right now, this is by choice. I'm taking a break for my own health. But when you're forced to take a break and you have no choice with that, then you, you can only focus on what you can control. And John's a fucking G. He's he's a he's a he's a beast in this game. He's been out for three years before he came back and made it look easy. So I know he'll be fine. Okay, you're a big Tom Aspinall fan. Why? And what do you like about his game? First off, hand speed. Fucking hell. I've never seen. I've watched it over and over again. Like when I see his fights, I'll just replay like a combo, and I'm just like, what the fuck? Like the way, even faster than some lightweights. He's a beast, bro. Like I said, hand speed, first of all, then also fight IQ. I wanna see him versus Suragans, I'll be honest. Styles make fights and that would be a fucking amazing fight. I know it would, cause they have that nice footwork, that ballerina footwork. Let me watch this one, let me watch this one. I just wanna see one of the ones, his hand speed. Like he throws a combo, boom, look at this. Takes his time, assesses the situation. Uh, switches southpaw. 
Uh, back to Orthodox. Woo, good distance. He's getting reads. Just letting him touch him. Get okay, oblique. Oh, boom. Oh, off the back elbow. Boom. Look at that. It's just a double leg. Takes him down. And then what does he do? Full mount. And it's a wrap from there, I'm going to guess. All right. So, Sergey has also been on an absolute tear ever since losing his UFC debut and just in his career. He lost his debut? Yeah. Overeem knocked him out in 2018. Oh, wow. In his debut. Sergey, in his 19 fights, has a 79% KO ratio. Well, this guy, tell you one thing, Polar Bear. Do not be stuck on the iceberg with that, man. How does this fight play out? I, I think him do what he always does. March Aspinall down and barrage. Just throw a barrage at him and overwhelm him. Um, and also be aware of the takedown from Aspinall, because I think when he does that, Aspinall will shoot. But Aspinall, footwork. Use good footwork. Establish the distance straight away. Counter. Use leg kicks, oblique kicks, measure your distance. Just keep your chin down. Use your, use your frame. You can line him up while he's barraging. Use your frame, boom, catch him. But I think good footwork and, and, and oblique kicks or teeps in the beginning, or even throughout the fight, we'll say it's three rounds, right? Five rounds, Fuck off. fight. Oh, that's right, it's an interim, yes. Oh, oh, let's go deep. Use the first two, three rounds just to like establish your distance and stuff and pop, pop him. See what happens. Yeah. Oh shit. That's right. It's fine. It's an interim title. Yes. Okay. All right. Official pick. I'm gonna go Aspinall. Go a good Aspinall. distance. I don't think so. I'm gonna go Aspinall. Late stoppage or late finish. Oh right. And now for the main event. All right. The light heavyweight picture has unfortunately been plagued by injuries, and we have had the last two champions vacate their titles to not hold up the division. Alex departed the middleweight division after his loss at 287. He has moved up to his more natural weight class and has found himself in the title picture after only one fight. How do you think he did against Jan? I think he did well, better than I expected. Um, I thought Jan was gonna take him down and overwhelm him on the ground, but nah, he had good takedown defense. Uh, he looked slower though. He didn't have as much snap and light heavyweight from what I saw like that. That he has, but again, it's first fight like altitude heavy. as well. True. Yep, there we go. But his gas tank held up well for over three rounds. Yeah, for altitude, yeah. for the grappling as well. Yeah, and good takedown defense. But is it crazy that he was the biggest in the middleweight division, and now he's also the biggest in the 205 division? Jury comes into fight night at around 217. Pereira is going to come in close to 230. Real? Yeah. Man, like I said, these middleweights should get on their fucking knees and thank me because I got this man out of there. Because if not, you have to deal with him over and over again, all of you. And I doubt any of you would want to fucking fight this guy. I did four times, but I got it done just with one. I like this fight because they're both very unorthodox in their approach, their fighting style. You know, the way Pereira leg kicks, the way Yuri likes to own the space and throw combos, even like his pot shots, the way he moves, his movement is crazy. Like it's just, it's very unorthodox. Look, I'll say Pereira is a special human being, not just a fighter special human being and i'll say that because i've been in there with him many times the special human being and he's got a special ability when it comes to putting people to sleep you can do it to anyone anyone it's very impressive his story his story is very impressive what he's done in kickboxing coming to the ufc hunting me down getting hunted and then going up to 205 now and looking to claim a second belt like when they do a story or a movie on his life it's gonna be something amazing. But we're saying that, Yuri as well, special human being. The way he approaches the, the fight game, as, as a martial artist, he, he sticks to his code. He knows who he is. Um, he likes to train with different methods. Like he punches a, a tree 500 times a day. And he just mentioned before, he'll lock himself in darkness for three days. And that's, that's a good way to even strengthen this. Because you go through some stuff, you have no stimulus, just darkness and water. You sit there and you just have to meditate. That's imagine that, 24 hours in a day. I imagine this whole day I just sat down in darkness and it's not even halfway through the day, you know, just over halfway. Crazy. Um, you met Jury that time we had a house party in Vegas and he pulled yeah. up the Samurai Sword. Yeah, he's a cool dude. He's, he's, he's a special human being, like his energy. Also, we're the chosen few, so we're cool. He's just, he just oh, I just like the way he approaches. As for a guy who's as big as he is, he could be super intimidating and whatnot, but he's such a, a gentle giant. Comes in, very respectful, shows love to everyone. But he's just, also, he's stacked, like stacked. He's just a big human being, like jacked. 
and the way he approaches the game, like I said, is just is different. Um, when it comes to the fight, almost like what Teddy Atlas said, that there comes a moment in the fight, there comes a moment where that voice comes to you and it depends if you want to tell that voice to shut the fuck up and carry on with your work or you succumb to that voice. I feel like in this fight, that moment's going to come for either guy. But I'll say for Jury, when that voice comes, do what I did in the Gaslam fight. Just say, shut the fuck up, I'm busy, and keep working. There's ways you can unlock your brain. Because most people in that, in that point, they give up or they just fall to their back and then get taken out. But then when you've done the work on yourself, you've been to worse places because there's nothing worse than yourself, you against you. So yeah, those moments I'm not surprised. But again, he got rocked in the Teixeira fight. And then good thing Teixeira went for the guillotine and then slipped off. And he still held the composure enough to win that fight. It's a hard fight for both men. But again, it's a hard fight for Yiri because that time bomb, you just have to, but you have to, you can, you can defuse the bomb. That's the thing, you have to find out how to defuse the bomb. That's a good one. Defuse the bomb. Who's the bomb? Alex. Yeah, Alex uh, has got the bomb. Yeah, you just have to defuse the bomb. I know how to defuse the bomb. It's exciting. This is what makes it exciting anyway. But regardless, I'm going with Yidi. Bohaska. Does the fight go the distance? No. Five rounds? I don't think so. Not with this one. Not at heavyweight. No. I mean light heavyweight. No, it doesn't go the distance. And yeah, we'll see. We'll see. And with that. Hey guys, what's up? Izzy here. Like, subscribe, and comment if you enjoyed this video.